Assalamualaikum and a very good day. My name is Abdul Rashid bin Hamdam and today I will be presenting the term paper which is Fake Foundation for the Islamic Economy and the Sustainable Development Goal. Our main focus will be from the perspective of unemployment and the Islamic economic system. Before moving on to the presentation, let us define the key terms that are used in this term paper. The two important terms for the term papers are unemployment and the Islamic economic system. Unemployment is the term used to describe someone who is actively searching for a job but is unable to find one. The person is then considered unemployed. Where else, the Islamic economic system is an economic system that are based on the principles of the Al-Quran and Al-Hadith. The Islamic economic system is built on the notion that faith, beliefs, and economic transactions are inseparable. My group and I have curated five questions to be answered throughout this term paper, and we will be presenting the answers for the five questions respectively. Without further ado, let's move on to the first question. Let us talk about the first question in this presentation. What are the factors of unemployment? The first factor of unemployment is due to location and mobility in the workplace. In comparison to people living in cities, those living in rural regions have less chances for employment, more economic disparity and more difficult time than their urban counterparts in finding work. These individuals have a difficult time breaking into the labour market due to insufficient information about job opportunities. Moving on, Age, gender and marital status are all factors to be considered for unemployment. To make up for the shortages in the male-dominated workforce, the Ministry of Finance has advocated for more female involvement in the workplace. Family responsibilities boost a woman's propensity to enter the workforce. Thus, age, gender and marital status are only some of the demographic factors that can explain why certain people are more likely to be unemployed than others. Next is the history of the family. The socio-economic standing of individuals are often determined by the position of their parents in the job market, their educational background and the level of income for their parents. For example, parents who have high earnings will educate their children about the soft talents in the job market. In other words, the social standing of young parents' social network will influence the employability of a job-seeking individual. Moving on to the next factor, which is education, acquired skills and the years spent in the workforce. There are still some graduates who are without work after receiving their degrees. Hence, high unemployability rate among recent college graduates are due in part to a lack of competent employees as well as a lack of appropriate job experiences. Last but not least is the lack of professional trainings. Training is absolutely necessary before beginning employment in order to get work experience that is relevant to the job that is being sought. Thus, training must be completed before beginning their unemployment. Moving on to the second question, let us talk about the effects of high unemployment in a nation. Unemployment equals to loss of income. As a result, unemployed individuals will not be able to pay their rent and loan which can lead to the loss of their assets such as their house and cars. This ultimately increases homelessness rate. Other than that, unemployment can affect their future prospects. This is true for those who are not in the labor force for a long period of time. Most employers will look for an individual with relevant experience and up-to-date experiences in this digital age. Also, unemployment can affect an individual's mental health and physical health. Unemployed individuals will have a higher stress level which can lead to insomnia, migraine and the worst case scenario fall into depression. Physically, these individuals may develop chronic diseases such as diabetes, high blood pressure and cardiac arrest. Secondly, on a societal level, the poverty rate in the community will rise and lead to an undesirable neighborhood. A community with high unemployment would be excluded by the general public and lead to a lower quality of neighbourhood which will then restrict them from public transportation and other services. Also, exploitation of labour might happen when someone is desperately trying to work for the sake of surviving. Some employers will exploit them by paying them lesser and ask them to do more work 
Underpaid professionals are also a form of exploitation of human resources. Thirdly, let's talk about the effects on a country. Unemployment makes people spend less money. This will lead to a decrease in the amount of goods and services produced and sold. This impacts the economy's ability to grow productively and eventually lead to a lower country GDP. Last but not least, government will have to allocate more budget to help the unemployed individual. It will hurt the country's financial if unemployment prolongs without an end. In a nutshell, it is proven that high unemployment rate affects everyone at every single level. Next, let's talk about our third question. What is the mechanism of Islam economy that can address the problem of unemployment? Zakat, a form of Islamic charity can have a positive impact on the labor market in a number of ways. One way is by expanding the labor force. By encouraging productivity and providing capital for productive purposes, Zakat can increase the supply of labor which in turn can lead to an increase in national output. Zakat was provided during the time of the Prophet Wasallam and the Caliph Umar bin Abdul Aziz, not only in the form of necessities but also as capital for productive purposes. Hence, higher skill will eventually produce demand if the labor supply is greater than the demand. Another way that Zakat can impact the labor market is by increasing labor demand. Using Zakat to fund social services and infrastructure projects can lead to job creation and higher national income. This will increase the demand for labors which can help to restore the balance between supply and demand, which is important in avoiding unemployment. Overall, Zakat can contribute to increase productivity and a stronger economy by expanding the labor force and increasing labor demand. It can also help to maintain the balance between supply and demand which is important for reducing unemployment and promoting economic stability. Let's proceed to the next question which is question 4. How is the Islamic economic system different from conventional system in fighting unemployment? Firstly is the ban on interest. In the conventional system, the financial sector's main objective is to make revenue out of self-interest. However, according to Quranic verses, Islam prohibits interest because it is viewed as a form of injustice towards individuals. However, a high interest rate can make it difficult to pursue self-interest because it lowers an individual's income and they must pay the bank more. As a result, people will prefer to be unemployed because they believe it is unimportant to pursue their own self-interest while making less income. Secondly, Islam prohibits monopolies. Monopoly can force small or large businesses to shut down because it eliminates free competition and causes inflation, which can result in rising unemployment. Next is exploitation. In the conventional economic system, for instance, the poor are abused by the property owners or employers. On the other hand, the Islamic economic system condemns exploitation because it harms the weaker classes including customers, women, and orphans, and ultimately it can result in slavery. Therefore, if income, people, and work are distributed fairly across all divisions of an institution, unemployment can be prevented. Last but not least is zakat. All Muslims are required to pay zakat if they have excess cash. The basic goal of zakat is to distribute extra wealth from the wealthy to the needy. According to Islamic economic theory, zakat is employed as a nation's fiscal policy to subsidize public infrastructure and services that would generate jobs and raise the people's living standard. For this part of the video, I will be explaining the fifth question which is how does unemployment fighting mechanism of the Islamic economic system contribute to the sustainable development goals? The sustainable development goals and the Islamic economic systems are not mutually exclusive. Rather, they complement each other in a beautiful way. One of the features of the Islamic economic system is financial stability. The use of interest and excessive speculation is prohibited in the Islamic economy, which makes it more resilient to financial collapses. A suitable case study for this would be the 2008 global financial crisis, which saw the global economy collapse due to the use of the excessive speculation and excessive use of interest in the economy. And this is not present in the Islamic economy. 
The financial stability directly contributes to goal number eight, which is decent work and economic growth. The second feature of the Islamic economic system is financial inclusion. Many Muslims do not have access to financial services due to religious prohibitions. This is where the Islamic economic system can promote financial inclusion by offering Sharia compliance financing products to Muslims. The third feature of the Islamic economic system is Zakat. Zakat is a compulsory wealth contribution for Muslims who reaches a certain threshold in regards to their wealth. If they do not reach the threshold, then they will be entitled to receive the Zakat. Zakat has an inbuilt mechanism to distribute wealth equally in the economy to help the needy. And this will contribute to goal number 10 of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is reduce inequality, and also goal number 2, which is no hunger. Finally, let's talk about Wakaf. Wakaf is an endowment contributed voluntarily by a Muslim. The act of Wakaf can benefit the Ummah in various aspects. For example, if a Wakaf fund is used to build a hospital, then contractors will be hired to build the hospital which stimulates the economy. When the construction is done, then job opportunities will be created to fill in the vacancies in the hospital. Once the hospital is up and running, it can then treat unwell and sick patients in the society. Therefore, the use of Wakaf contributes to goal number one, which is no poverty, goal number eight, which is decent economic growth, and finally, goal number nine, which is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Now, allow me to conclude this video. In conclusion, Unemployment can be detrimental to a nation at every level. Therefore, it is imperative for young individuals to actively engage in career planning in order to be adequately prepared for the job market and decrease the likelihood of unemployment. Furthermore, it is essential for young individuals to make informed decisions about the type of work they aspire to pursue. Studies have shown that a significant number of young people residing in Malaysia's East Coast states are still unemployed despite their effort to secure employment in the local labour market. Therefore, in light of the recent challenges posed by the modern job and economy, it is crucial for young people to plan their professional futures with sound judgement to avoid potential issues. Also, zakat is an important concept in Islam that involves the distribution of a portion of a person's wealth to those in need. It is believed that this practice can help to address issues such as unemployment and financial inequality. The Islamic economic system is based on principles that are intended to promote fairness and justice, and it prohibits certain practices such as interest-based lending and exploitation. The Islamic economic system also has a contribution to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by promoting financial stability, reducing inequality, and addressing issues such as poverty and hunger. In addition to zakat, the concept of waqf, which involves the donation of property or assets for charitable purposes, can also play an important role in supporting the Sustainable Development Goals. Overall, it seems that the principle of the Islamic economic system and the practice of zakat and waf can potentially contribute to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and to the promotion of a sustainable development. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum.